All right, good morning. It is Monday and it is past 7.30. <laughs> so it is Monday Morning Mojo with Anna Gibbs. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, oh my gosh, do I have so many things to chat with you about today. So uh, two years ago is when we started this journey and I launched Monday Morning Mojo and it has been such an amazing journey and I love doing this with all of you. Um, and so I just wanna celebrate the fact that we've been doing this for two years. And it is my intention to come on here every Monday morning and share words of wisdom, share inspiration, share teachings and thoughts that will help you live a bigger life. I started my personal journey uh, in, in personal development and self-care um, probably at least 20 years ago uh, after experiencing a lot of challenges and failing forward and some, uh, you know, really, I think some moments where I was, um, you know, just really evaluating my life. And so I started to uh, understand and examine how my thoughts were shaping my reality. And I started a journey to really discover more around positive psychology, positive thinking, even though I didn't know what to call it then and uh, really started to open myself up to understanding more about how we have to take responsibility for our lives. And so that started my journey on personal development. And I certainly have grown and developed quite a bit over the last 20 years. And then I really connected with my calling and my purpose to help other people do the same and discover more about themselves. And so that's when I started coaching and um, really developed a passion for taking my learning and education to a much more formal and deep level and started coaching and helping other people. And, and I love what I do and I love my life and I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm, I'm not uh, saying that I'm tired of doing what I'm doing, but I'm just tired. And, you know, I had so many ideas around the topic for today uh, for, you know, to be able to celebrate two years here on Mojo with this platform. And I had, you know, a lot of uh, things outlined. And, and I just have to tell you, I decided to come on here and just be real and authentic. Is that okay with you guys? Let me know if you're with me, uh, how you feel about that. Um, and this is about us being real and not, not being negative, but being real so that we can understand what we need to do to help ourselves. And, um, you know, we've talked about this a lot here on Mojo, that uh, the world is, is always changing around us. It is, there's a lot going on, right? There's a lot going on. And the world that we live in today is not the world our moms lived in. And it's not the world that our kids are living in today is not the world that we lived in at their age. Um, so how many of you can, can agree that, you know, when you think about all the, the pressures and the stresses on you, um, it can take its toll. And it can take its toll emotionally. It can take its toll mentally. Um, so if you're with me, let me know, throw something in the chat or the comments. And so I'm here to, to just talk about this a little bit and for us to recognize that we're all dealing with stress. We're all dealing with some form of trauma and we're all dealing with some burnout. Okay. And I, and again, this is not about me trying to start your day in a negative way. Uh, I can I can come on here every week and just give you the pep talk and give you the inspiration and give you the tools and I will and there are times I think that um, I owe it to all of us to open up an honest conversation and be real for a minute right so I'm tired I'm emotionally tired uh, there are times when I'm physically tired I'm mentally tired and I think when I can take a breath and take a step back and accept that then I'm in a better position to create remedies or opportunities, right? <clears throat> so I think that burnout is something that we're all experiencing and we have to be able to understand that that's part of life, right? Stress is part of life and our response to stress can affect the, our emotions, can affect our uh, ability to process and, and uh, problem solve. And, there are a couple of things when you know, there are a few things that if you're experiencing uh, 
that I would say you're, you're in kind of burnout, right? And I think that we have to be aware of that. So if you're dealing with some kind of brain fog, if you're dealing with, um, if you're responding to things differently, in other words, if you're short, if you're maybe more apathetic, if you're not able to feel that compassion that you normally would, uh, that could be a sign that you're burnt out. If you're having a hard time um, focusing, if you feel like there's a lot of demands on you, uh, those are signs that you're burnt out. If you're falling back into old patterns, right? Old patterns of, you know, the, the, the way we talk to ourselves, right? That crappy way that we tend to talk to ourselves. If we are overeating, over drinking, over smoking, uh, medicating somehow, we are probably uh, most certainly in, in a form of burnout. And so again, I want to open up this conversation because I always want this to be a safe space for us to say, okay, I'm with you, girl. I feel it too. I feel it too. And as I become aware of it, I can do something about it. And, you know, this is the house that we live in, right? This is our bodies, our minds. This is our temple. This is the house that we live in. And I'm sure that we can all agree we want to live in a nice place. We want to live in a place that makes us feel good, that's tranquil. Uh, we want to live in a place that, that uh, welcomes us, that is, is really our refuge, right? And so our body is a metaphor for that. Our body and our mind is a metaphor for our home. Now, just like our home, just like our physical home, um, there are times where it's going to be messier than other times. There are going to be times when it's cluttered. There's going to be times when it feels like, oof, I got to get in here and clean it up. So we have to be aware of that, our mental state, our emotional state, our body, right? How do we clean it up? How do we take um, the time to really assess where we're at, right? And, and focus on some self-care. Now, as I've said here so many times before, self-care cannot be another to-do list. Right. So if you're taking notes this morning, jot that one down. Self-care. And if you're watching on Facebook, put it in the comments. Self-care should not become another to do list because we can uh, assume that self-care is like a bath, a candle, a bottle of wine, whatever. No, self-care starts sometimes with just taking a moment to breathe and self-care starts with assessing where our priorities need to be and saying no to other things. Remember, no is a complete sentence. So self-care starts with how we set boundaries. And, and look, you know, using that, that metaphor about the home and our, our house, there are people sometimes who drive by our house and whether they intend to or not, they're dumping garbage on our front lawn. <laughs> right? They're dumping garbage. I dump garbage. I don't mean to, but I'm dumping garbage on my husband. I'm dumping garbage on my kids, my people I work with, right? We're all dumping this emotional baggage. There's a lot of stuff happening in the world right now. So when we're connecting and feeling that compassion to what's happening in the world, you know, we're taking in some of that, right? So there's all this garbage getting dumped, right? So all this stuff coming at us, and yes, that's causing stress. And, and, you know, I used to believe, I'm starting to think bigger about stress. I used to believe that stress is or was your response to an event. Uh, and I do believe that the way we choose to respond to certain things that are happening will increase our stress or, or um, result in how we respond physically and emotionally. I'm also understanding more and more that in addition to that, sometimes we just have to be honest that the event itself is stressful, right? That um, I, I really, I, I'm really looking at this differently. I used to teach and coach people that the event itself is not the stress point that it just is. No, there are some events I think that are just plain stressful. And then our stress level can go up higher because of the way we might choose to respond to it. So I'm evolving my thinking on that. And so, you know, all this stuff coming at us is, is kind of like trash getting dumped in our front lawn. And so we have to make some decisions about that, right? Do you want to just live in, in your home with a bunch of trash? No. So what do we have to do? We have to start cleaning it up. So my message to you this morning is awareness. My message to you this morning is that you're not alone if you're feeling this way uh, and that the most 
um, you know, secure, intelligent, emotionally aware people, whatever you want to call us, right? With a positivity, all those great things that all of us are feeling this way at times, right? And it's okay. It's it's what I would chalk up to be the human experience. And I think that we have to become more and more aware of the messaging around us. For instance, even this background, I chose this intentionally. Uh, if you read some of the things behind me, right, these are the messages that are being fed to us all the time. Uh, and, you know, myself, again, I'm, I'm becoming more aware of that. You know, I used to think that the grind was something super positive. Well, I don't know. You know, sometimes there, there's a time to grind it out. And then there are times where we need to take a time out. And, and so we have to know how to balance the two. But I realized that, you know, a lot of us, especially in our careers in the business world, right, we're being told to just pound it, grind it, persevere, get that, you know, positive outlook on just, just, you know, think about what you can do versus what you can't do. Uh, and whatever you believe is true, which I, I, I agree with. And so all of that is great. And there are times when we're just freaking tired and exhausted mentally and emotionally. And so if we're not able to connect with that and be able to acknowledge that, can we ever possibly do anything to, to deal with it, to, uh, to work through it, right? And so on this two-year anniversary for Mojo, uh, so many things came to light. I mean, I love doing this with you every morning and I make myself crazy stressed out to do it every week and to do it well and to do it on time and, and, and to be something to everyone. And at the end of the day, I just have to come out here and be who I am. And those of you who are connecting are getting value from it. And that's amazing. And that is, you know, that is the, the, the payoff for doing this, right? Um, but to put all the stress on myself is not going to help any of you either, right? And so what are you doing in your daily life to put stress on yourself that, that maybe this conversation is just raising some awareness? You know, what can we do to, to get more comfortable talking about stress, talking about burnout? Um, I think a lot of us think that if we acknowledge that, someone's going to think we're suddenly not capable or that we're not, you know, at the top of our game. And, and that's not true. I think that we're, we are at the top of our game and we're giving so much and we're excelling and succeeding. And that's why we're feeling a little burnt out. And so we have to give ourselves permission and space to feel that and to connect with that uh, so that we can recharge our battery and, and, and take the time we need to clean out the, the front yard, right? To get rid of the garbage, uh, to be able to acknowledge what we need, right? Like I said, self-care and self-care has to be more than a bubble bath. Uh, and that, that is where we have to have the, the, I guess the, the trust in knowing that there, there are other people who can support that, right? That we have to create space for each other. Um, so that was uh, on my mind this morning. And, you know, there are a lot of resources available to help us all look at, you know, how to recognize those signs of burnout and how to work through the, the burnout as well. Um, a couple of things I'll share with you here this morning, uh, many of which I have to be, or I, I intend to be conscious about for myself. Uh, one thing is, is simple and that's breath. And I think that we have to acknowledge the way our body might be feeling at any given moment and just taking a small time out. And I get it, you know, a lot of us are, you know, working through the day, uh, either very time blocked or, or just moving through the day with a certain, um, intensity and speed, yet we can all afford to take a minute and, and focus on ourselves and just bring in some, some peace, close our eyes and do some deep breathing, especially if you can breathe in deeply through and out your nose. I know that can regulate our nervous system and that helps me a lot. Um, I think other things that we have to realize that can um, uh, balance out those feelings of stress and burnout is moving the body. You know, you can call it exercise, working out, whatever feels right for you. Um, I have always struggled with that for my entire life. So I'm, I'm releasing that. And, and I personally uh, release judgment for myself on this. I just recognize that I have to move my body every day. 
So on some days, it's a lot of stretching and yoga. On other days, it's a walk. Um, uh, every once in a while, I show, I show up at the gym, you know, whatever it is, but we just have to move our body. We just have to recognize that our body is powerful. And I, at 50 years old, I'm starting to feel that maybe for the first time uh, and starting to really connect with my body and the physical strength that I have. Um, I think another way to overcome or deal with feelings of burnout is also to recognize that we as human beings, we can do hard things. We're wired to figure things out. And so when you are faced with, um, you know, feeling overwhelmed or feeling stressed or feeling like people are just coming up in the garbage, um, just recognize that taking that time out and that deep breath can then lead into, okay, I can do something about this. I can figure this out. And then the other thing that I would remind you of, again, that I think is one of the most important parts of self-care is setting boundaries, right? And your boundaries are not about being selfish. Your boundaries are about protecting yourself so that you can continue to live the life you want at the highest level. And yes, give to other people and contribute, right? See, you know, for those of us who really come from contribution and feel like we're we're servant leaders and many of us may even label ourselves as people pleasers. Um, I think it's important for us to recognize um, that all of our positive traits, all of those things that we hold as values, if we don't manage them, they can actually start working against us and they can become a weakness. So if you want to come from contribution, if you want to be a servant leader, if you want to give back to the world around you, then you have to set boundaries and you have to be clear about what you need in order for you to be able to give it to other people, right? So, you know, that's why they say, put the oxygen mask on first. Um, and, you know, I have to give a shout out to my oldest daughter, my, my daughter, Lisa. She and I had a really amazing conversation Saturday night where, you know, she was teaching me some things and reminding me of some things and the work she's been doing over the years. And she actually said, mom, you've got to put your oxygen mask on first, right? And so I loved that we had that space to support each other and that I was able to let go of the mom persona, right? Which I, I think a lot of us can relate to and think, well, I'm supposed to be teaching her and I'm supposed to be guiding her. And I was able to allow her to be the teacher and the guide. And it was, it was amazing for both of us. And so, you know, I think another part of this is vulnerability is we have to be able to be honest with ourselves and others and show when we're having a hard day, show when we're having a rough time, show when we're feeling overwhelmed. Uh, that's another thing that I'm starting to uh, change my, my personal thinking on. I used to have this rule, and I've even shared this with my husband many times. I don't use the word overwhelm because the minute I acknowledge it, then I get into this negative spiral. Well, okay, so I'm, I'm absolutely clear that I know for sure my thoughts shape my reality. So when I do feel like I'm, I'm feeling overwhelmed or get into a lot of negative thoughts, uh, I will take this time out to redirect for sure. But part of that, I think it's okay to say, I feel overwhelmed. I feel I'm in this space and I, I need to feel that. I need to connect that. Uh, and I just choose not to stay there long, but I need to be honest about what's going on so I can reframe it um, so that I can redirect it so that I can look at how to move into the next activity or part of my day with a different perspective so that I can feel different and respond different. Um, and so these are my thoughts for you this morning. This is just me really uh, kind of opening up the space for you. Let me know what you got out of this. Let me know um, if this resonated with you. I know for sure I'm not the only one feeling the way I've been feeling. Um, and Maybe you didn't walk away with this from this mojo with a, a, a list of 10 things that will help you. There's a few things that I uh, included in this conversation. But if you walk away with anything this morning is, is, I would say, two things I would want you to walk away with this morning. Number one, this is where you live. This is your house. Okay. 
Some days it's going to feel pretty cluttered. Other days it's going to, you're going to look around and go, oh, it feels so good. It feels clean and beautiful and shiny. And yet this is your house. This is where you want to live. This is where you want to feel good. This is where you are you. And be aware when other people start driving by your house and dumping off their garbage, whether they mean to or not. They're dumping whatever they need on you. They're, they're dumping their emotions on you. They're dumping their fears, their priorities, right? You get what I mean. So do not let the yard just fill up with garbage and live in a crappy place, right? You don't want to look around and feel like, oh my gosh, this is just a bunch of trash here in my house. We have to take responsibility for cleaning it up. And you have to think about what you need in order to clean it up and how to remove the trash. And then the second thing I want you to take away from today is that if you've been feeling any of the things I've described, anxious, um, unclear, fuzzy in terms of your thinking, uh, not motivated, um, you know, responding in ways you don't normally respond, uh, overeating, right? All those the, over, um, just abusing our bodies then, you know, we are feeling a little burned out. We're feeling stressed and it's okay to acknowledge it. That it's okay to say, I'm feeling it. And so, because when you acknowledge it, you have the opportunity to do something about it. And so those are the two things I would want you to take away from this morning. So let me know your thoughts. Let me know um, how this affected you this morning. Let's continue this conversation. It is um, absolutely in alignment with who we are here on this Mo Mojo platform. It is about living life at a high level. It is about taking control and being positive and acknowledging that we're having this human experience. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here. You guys have a powerful week and I will see you back here next week. Thanks. Take care. Congratulations. Two years. <laughs> I love it. <laughs>